Hello internet, internet. Big Dave here, and I am Chief. This is Field Runners from Subatomic Studios. This game normally retails for $5, but I picked it up for 3 during the Because We May sales event. The sales event is going on through, I believe, June 2nd, so head over to BecauseWeMay.com for more information. Field Runners is a game that's been around for a long time. It originally debuted for the iOS platform in 2008. It has since been expanded and ported to just about everything you can imagine. It's on the DS, it's on the PSP, it's on BlackBerry. How many games are on BlackBerry? It's on the Google Chrome App Store. And finally, it is now on PC. Now, make no mistake about it, this port to PC is a blatant and obvious move by Subatomic to squeeze the last bit of money juice out of the carcass of Field Runners before they discard it in favor of Field Runners 2. But that's all right with me. I've heard a lot about this game over the years, and having not had a touch device to play it on, I am very happy to get the chance to finally experience this tower defense game. So it's been around, uh, like I said, since 2008. It's won some awards. It's on a lot of top 10 lists. So let's take a look at it and let's see exactly why that is. So first of all, some of the particulars of the port. Uh, this is piss poor, this option screen. That is just crap. Also notice we are in the four by three aspect ratio here or some such uh, squarish aspect ratio. I understand if Subatomic created this game for that ratio. Obviously, developers are going to develop the game for the aspect ratio at which it will be published originally. So you may not have art assets for a 16 by 9 version of a game that was originally developed for a handheld. I understand that, and that's okay. However, just make a mat. Look at a game like Runespell Overture, okay? Runespell Overture is a 4 by 3 aspect ratio game. All of the action takes place in a window, which is the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. However, in what here are black spaces on either side of the video, Runespell actually has graphical matting. And that's a brilliant way to make your 4x3 game appear to function correctly in the 16x9 environment. Fact of the matter is, the vast majority of PCs are using a widescreen format. You are best to create your stuff in a widescreen format, if at all possible, However, if you're porting something that was created for a different aspect ratio device, fake it. Just fake it. It makes your game look more professional overall. Just a little bit of advice from me, someone who has never and probably will never design a game. All right, so we've got our uh, maps here. Again, this is a tower defense game. It's what I like to call an open field tower defense game, meaning that you just have this massive open field and a specific direction or directions from which enemies enter. So grasslands, crossroads, drylands, and I believe crystal caves were the original uh, were the original maps that were released with the original version of the game back in 2008. You also got four initial towers, and that was pretty much it. Ex later expansions brought the number of towers up and expanded to add many, many more maps. But we're going to stick with grasslands because it is the simplest of maps. Uh, once you're in grasslands, when you get to round 50... I believe it was round 50, you will unlock crossroads. And that's true for uh, pretty much everything else. If you'll notice here, uh, reach round 50, reach round 50, reach round 50. So halfway through the halfway mark, it is 100 rounds on each individual level. Once you beat the level outright, you get access to all of these additional modes. Initially, classic is the only mode available and beating the game or beating the mode will get you all of these other modes. A lot of replayability here. I can see why this game excelled at attracting casual and hardcore gamers alike, because it does have a lot of uh, different ways to play. And that's a very important thing in actually appealing to a wide audience. So let's go ahead and get things started here. We have four different towers to choose from and 100 rounds of gameplay. So let's get right into things. A nice layout here, just telling you what everything is. Nice and simple. Lose a life when some, somebody makes it through your defenses and enters your door. Here are your towers. Here is your different UI stuff. Click the screen to begin. Nice and simple. So we're going to start out with a couple of towers. 
and we'll do three here like this. And because this is an open field tower defense game, that means you get to you get to build yourself. You get to create from from your mind, from your sinister genius, a maze of death. And that is the wonderful thing about this style of tower defense game. It is all about the creativity of your sinister mind. What are you going to do? Well, that's up to you. What am I going to do here? I think I'm going to do a, uh, a fairly standard strategy here. I'm going to just zigzag them. I'm going to bring them down, then back up and down and up and down and up and down and up. And then when I get over here, I'm going to bring them all the way back to the beginning. And then I'm going to zigzag them again all the way to the end. That's a little bit overkill on this particular map, but I just like to do it because I love the way it looks. I love the look of having this entire screen filled with a obstacle course of hot lead and missiles. Just nothing makes me happier in a tower defense game. So I'm going to concentrate on slowly building this up. The initial waves are going to be absolutely no threat to me. Uh, just with what I've built here alone, I can get through the next five or ten waves with no problem whatsoever. But I want to continue to be diligent in building up my defensive structures. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to generally use just a lot of Gatling turrets uh, in the early going, and then I'm going to slowly start to incorporate the rest of the turrets. This is a good time to build a, uh, build a goo turret here. So this will actually slow the enemies. It keeps them in the killing zone for longer, and that is a very good thing. And after that, I will add a missile turret. The missile turret is a slow firing but high damage turret. Uh, I tend to find that they do well against air units, especially air units that have been slowed. And uh, air units are going to tend to be a big problem for any style of maze. No matter how well you build your maze, you're really not delaying air units at all. When I do finally get some air units, they're just going to come out and fly straight across the map. So I generally just like to make a giant line of missile launchers through here. Oh, here's speaking of air units. And that line of missile launchers usually does a lot to really just absolutely shred those air waves. So all guns can shoot up, if you were wondering. Some tower defense games, only certain anti-air weapons can shoot air. But here, everything can shoot air. So uh, you're not worrying about how am I going to nail that thing? Do I need to uh, look ahead and watch my waves and then expand my defenses specifically to combat uh, anti-air when I know I have an air wave coming? Nope. Everything you build can indeed hit the air. So no worries there. Just build stuff, build lots of stuff, build many machines that will deal much death to both flesh and metal alike. So speaking of waves, actually, I was just talking about uh, waves. Here are your waves. These are your rounds. This will give you a good idea of what you need to prepare for. You can see we're on round 13, now transitioning to 14 and uh, you can get a nice look ahead and you can know when those pesky air waves are coming now what i know is coming are some dudes on motorcycles and they tend to get whoa they tend to get through the defenses pretty quick and uh, i really really hate those guys because early on they're one of the biggest threats uh, in my opinion because they can skate through there so fast before you've had a chance to build a really really good maze uh, now you will notice in in classic tower defense uh, tower defense style, you can't block the guys in. There always has to be a way. You know, one of the contrivances of tower defense games is that you can't just put a line of turrets at the very front and uh, just let the guys get massacred and they can't even get through at all to threaten you. You have to essentially allow them uh, a way through. Kind of silly, kind of sucky, but it's a game after all, so what do you expect? So we're getting closer to round 20 here when I know some of the more uh, some of the more threatening stuff is going to start to come. So I'm focusing on making sure that my maze is tight and ready to go when that stuff comes. Now, you can pause if you really need to uh, quickly reestablish some defenses or build some stuff. And you can also fast forward. Now, fast forwarding, the, the number one issue with fast forwarding is when you're in a in an early stage like this and you're still building it kind of puts you at a big disadvantage uh, to fast forward too much because you might forget your fast forwarding and all of a sudden boom here comes a bunch of guys that you weren't really prepared for that you needed maybe another round or two of, of slow time regular time to prepare for now this is a tower defense game so there's not really a lot more to talk about i mean 
do what you do in a tower defense game. I mean, this is like many a game that has come before it, and it is unabashedly so. I mean, it, it doesn't make any bones about its inspiration as and, and its its place in the world as a tower defense game. And I think that's part of what makes it fun. You know, it's not trying to be something more than it is. Uh, it's not, for, for all that I love, Sanctum, it's not trying to redefine the genre by having an FPS tower defense game. It's just saying, we're going to do tower defense, and we're going to do it in a way that is really, really tight, really smart, uh, with a fun art style, with decent music and sound effects. We're just going to have fun with it. And, uh, you know, this game does show its roots as a touch game. Uh, luckily, they did put in some shortcuts. Uh, the number pad will scroll you through uh, some of the different turrets, as you can see here, just corresponding to the number uh, that they would have. Uh, let's see. What am I doing here? Oh, I don't have enough for the Tesla turret. So uh, if I didn't already talk about the turrets, Gatling turret, slow turret, uh, missile and Tesla. I think I talked about everything with Tesla. Tesla is just an area shock turret, uh, really effective against infantry and anything that you can slow and keep in the killing zone for a few extra seconds. So you're going to see the money starting to add up and uh, things are starting to go pretty well. So we are going to look at uh, just continuing this maze, moving forward, on and on. I mean, this is a solid tower defense game. There's no, uh, there's no two ways about it. I'm not going to keep you guys really, really long with this. I'm just going to go into fast forward mode here. I'm going to keep building and building and building, and uh, I will let you guys uh, see what I have done in a few waves, okay? We'll, we'll get to about 80 or 90, and uh, I will rejoin you guys. All right, let's get this done, guys. Here we go. Behold my maze of death. We are on round 91, and I have pretty much completely built and upgraded my entire death-dealing, zigzagging, backtracking maze of destruction. So, uh, I did mention upgrades, and that's something that I neglected to mention when we were talking earlier. And uh, that is something you can do to your turrets. You can sell them, and you can upgrade them. So we can show you what upgrading a turret looks like. A little bit better, a lot better. So each turret has two different stages of upgrade, and you can see that once they're upgraded, they certainly do a lot of very delicious damage. So here's one of the uh, tricky waves here, 95, this helicopter wave. No problem at all. Those were some fast-moving choppers, but luckily my upgraded goo launchers took care of that just fine. So we are sailing to victory here. I still have all 20 of my lives intact, and I don't see any reason. If we look ahead here. Yeah, I don't see any reason that that should change. I've built up quite a supply of money, so as we wind down the last few minutes of the game, I will just go ahead and hand out some upgrades. Let's talk about a final verdict for field runners. You guys know I don't really give ratings, but uh, I have to say after the long wait, after the many years that I've waited to play this game, it pretty much hits on all of the things that I would want a tower defense game of this sort to hit on. I think the art style is cute, it's great, it's lovable, it is a little team fortress, a little comic book, I like it. Oh, stop him, stop him! No, oh, you are kidding me. On wave 99, we lose a life. There goes my perfect game. My life is meaningless. Alright guys, so again... Love the graphic style, the music is passable, the port is not so great, an obvious quick cash grab here for Subatomic, but again, nothing wrong with that. I don't have any problem with a developer trying to earn money off of something that they put their blood, sweat, tears, and love into. So I really respect these guys for maintaining this game. They have slowly but surely put out, I think, 8 to 10 different versions of this game across many, many different platforms, and I have a lot of respect for guys that are willing to uh, stick with their title for that long. And now, Field Runners 2 coming out very, very soon. That should be a lovely thing to behold indeed. And now that I am the owner of a touch device, oh, just got him, I will be purchasing Field Runners 2 as soon as it comes to my particular device. We'll put our name in here. Since it is character locked, I will use my pseudonym, Cheap Dave. Oh, there we go. Falling a little short of previous uh, previous games, but uh, not too bad at all. So again, field runners, tower defense, in the open field, 
lovable cartoon graphics, wonderful gameplay, so-so port, but I have to give it a big giant thumbs up. Definitely check it out before June 2nd. You have the opportunity to pick it up for just three bucks. It's also on sale on all of its other platforms. I've really, really enjoyed this game. It's worth your time. It's worth taking a look at. It is a good little time waster. And if you do have the opportunity, go ahead and pop over to your device's store of choice and you should find it on sale through June 2nd. All right, guys, I have been Big Dave. And until next time, take it easy.